So we're trying to wrap up rainbows here. And one more time, this is sort of the picture here. Sun behind you, light rays from the sun coming in, hitting a drop of water, which must be in the sky in order to see the rainbow. You get all the nice dispersion or color separation happening inside the raindrop. There's some reflection and refraction going on and the ultimate refraction that comes out sends the light your way. But just a couple things to clear up here. Uh, for one drop here, the blue is on the top and the red is on the bottom, but for actual rainbows that we see, that's actually the opposite's true. The red is always on the top for rainbows. So if you, if you see an actual rainbow, the red is always on the top like that. Uh, the blue is always on the bottom and the greens and so on are sort of in between like that. Um, and so of course the reason for the rainbows forming is there must be uh, large raindrops in the sky and the, the, the hardcore physics reason for this happening is dispersion. And what dispersion is, of course, is separation of light due to color, due to its color, which of course can be thought of as its wavelength. And so that's what dispersion is. So these are sort of your core region here. Must be large raindrops. Dispersion is the process. And of course, dispersion separates light due to its color, and that's what you get. The reason why the blue is on the top and the red is on the bottom, which isn't what we see, is rainbows themselves, of course, are, um, let's say, not due to just one drop. The one drop model I've been drawing here is just to show you sort of what happens, but of course, there's going to be many, many, many drops in the sky. So this portion of the sky, if you get one drop, there's going to be many, many drops all over the place like this, falling in that section of the sky. And every one of the drops is going to do this trick with the light. The light will hit the surface of the drop, penetrate inside, disperse, travel, reflect, refract back out, and that's what you get. So there's going to be many, many, many drops in the sky, and that effect sort of will turn the rainbow uh, the right side up the way I'll show you now. So just one more time on the rainbow. So here we go. Just beautiful to see, but of course, as we said, Here's the red on the top here, and here's the blue on the bottom. So we know that's for sure. And uh, this is the one I saw by my house here. Here it is in the sky here. You see that? And there's a zoom in of it here. Again, you see the red on the top and the blue on the bottom. And here's sort of a professional graphic of everything I showed you thus far about the rainbow. Um, there's the refraction as they're discussing right there on that first surface. Here's the rays traveling different angles here, and I like getting the different description here, but you know why they travel at different angles. It's because of dispersion. And here's that last refraction and reflection on that side here, partially reflected, because reflected the rest are refracted. And you see them go out with the blue on the top, the way I discussed, into someone's eye, or that's where the observer would be. So it's all nice and consistent. And so yes, it's literally light traveling you know, what's kind of hard to think about, but light literally travels inside of a drop. Inside of a little drop, light bounces around inside there and does its thing. And this is the reason why we get the, the colors upside down relative to one drop, because there's many drops that are responsible for making the rainbow. And as you can see here, the purples and the blues of, say, maybe the drop in the very highest portion of the sky. So these are the drops here that are really high in the sky. Well, those are just going to sort of miss the person's head, miss the observer's head here in the bottom, where the red sections of those highest drops will go into the observer's eye. So there's a red coming in on the top. The first thing the person sees is some red there. And then, of course, as you get a bit lower in the sky for the drops that are forming the rainbow, that's where the, the violets and the blues from the person can sort of make it into your eye at that point like that, so the lower ones. And so you can see it is consistent here with the reds on the top and the blues here are on the bottom. Many, many drops, like, you know, times a million or something like that drops are ultimately what causes the rainbow to occur, and so we're not too worried about the colors at that point. They get corrected because it's not just one drop, it's many drops, okay? And the other thing I just don't understand about this particular graphic that I found on the internet here is why is this guy so depressed looking? Rainbows are a very fun thing to see. They make me very happy. So I wonder why he's all like depressed. Maybe I can fix this a little bit here. No, that's better. He still looks a little depressed. Maybe I'll line up his eyebrows. Yeah, he still looks a little out of it, but okay, whatever. And lastly, the last little thing to tell you about rainbows is I told you in the beginning that the drops for rainbows have to be very large.
And the reason why the drops would need to be large is to allow dispersion to take place. So if you had a really, really small drop like that, and which of course happens, and the light would go into it like that, there just isn't a lot of room inside this small drop here. There is not a lot of room, like I said, to, to really get allow these colors to sort of separate a bit, and they all sort of sort of tend, tend to stay on top of each other because the region here is so small; they just don't have any travel distance to separate in there. And so, if you get a nice big drop like this, then again, when that white light comes in like this, here comes that white light in, then the colors do have a chance to kind of to separate like this as they enter the drop. So you can actually see the dispersion effect happen in there. And I can even have a quote for you on this here. And in fact, the size of these drops for the rainbows has to be something like on the order of like one millimeter or so. So there, if you look at a ruler, a metric ruler that you might have lying around, maybe on your desk or something like that. And if you look at, so here's the ruler like this, all of those little bitty marks on there that end up maybe one centimeter, then a bunch more like that end up two centimeters. The rainbow is just, the drop would have to be the size of two adjacent of those really, really small marks on there in order to give the light enough sort of space to fly through here, even though it's inside the raindrop, to separate so you can see it with your eyes.